welcome back. Come on in. And it's our community. Johnson County Community College has wonderful people on their faculty, and I like to introduce them to you from time to time, especially the good ones, or the ones that I think are good, and the ones that I think are interesting. Today, our guest is Laura Harris Gascone, and she is an associate professor of arts, humanities, and social science. That's a mouthful, I gotta <laughs> tell you, Laura. But what she is, is a ceramicist, and she is the coordinator of ceramics here at the college, and a fine ceramicist in her own right. Um, I thought that it would be nice if these people could see some of the really interesting pieces that you have created uh, and talk about those a little bit. The one I particularly like are the figures. And you, some of them are sitting down, some of them are kind of crouching, and um, they have wonderful, they almost look like Indian henna designs on them. Yes, yes. What, is that what, what caused you to do that? What, what was your inspiration for that? Actually, um, India is, uh, was one of the main um, sources of inspiration for my work, for the, for the actual figurative forms, um, since I was in undergraduate school. Um, and then when I began um, graduate school, um, I continued that interest and went to India. Um, but the mark making is actually, um, it, it came from um, a trip that I took uh -huh. um, several years ago, about five or six years ago, um, where I went to um, South Georgia, <laughs> where my father's uh, family came from, rural South Georgia. Um, and I went through um, the courthouses there, uh -huh. and I got to go through the old court records. Mm -hmm. and. The, court, the, the only court records that were from the 1800s that were still um, able to be deciphered, mm -hmm. read, mm -hmm. were done in indigo ink. And so really? um, the ones that were done in black had faded significantly and mm -hmm. were no longer legible. So I, to make a long story short, I found the mark making to be actually more interesting than the content. And that became, I mean, that just took off with um, they putting something that was so personal, um, you know, land deeds and things like this from my family mm -hmm. that went back generations um, of putting this script, um, and it's nonsense, a lot of it, um, of putting it on these figures. See, I just love it, but, but, the, but you know, the truth is that what you produce as an artist is, this, is, is your soul coming out. Yes. Are the things that you have found that have moved you in some way or another. And I, I just think that, um, I, I love that. Oh, I, I just you. think, and it seems to be, um, I, it's obviously female, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like a girly female. Well, and that's a very interesting point you bring up because when I was in undergraduate school, um, you know, I was I was much younger than I than I was when I started graduate school. That happens to all of us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was very very uncomfortable in the beginning uh -huh. making female figures because um, whether you like it or not, y if you have a male figure from an art historical s standpoint, if you look at the female mm -hmm. versus the male figure, um, you know, you look at the female, and there's a very fine line between something that's erotic versus just having it beautiful, whereas if you have Michelangelo's David, it's just beauty. It's mm -hmm. not, you don't take gender really, I mean it's gender, but, um, so I was very ca cautious about that. I didn't want them to be about something erotic or sexual or anything like uh -huh. that. I wanted them to just to you be. You wanted to be art. Right, right. And, uh, and personification of yourself, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, I, under, I just think that is, um, most, I think that's most interesting. But but even these years later, you have still done that. Yes, I, I still continue to do um, the female, and, and now that I'm a mother, I've, I've started to get interested in doing even children, because my figures, I always told myself I would only make pieces that I could lift. And so about <laughs> toddler size, at half inch thick hollow form pieces, is about as much as I can lift, but, um, since I've had my son, my son is Lucas, um, he's six now. Um, he's getting hard to lift. He's getting hard to lift, <laughs> but he's about the weight of one of my sculptures, about 60 pounds. 
<laughs> but uh, children, they're a hard subject too. Um, to make a child look not kind of corny, <laughs> you know. Well, there's a difference, you know, and, and I think a good analogy here, there's a, there's a difference between an artist who's an illustrator and an artist who is um, just an artist and not, a, but you can tell, I mean, when you look at a painting, you, you, I, I think to myself, oh, that person was an illustrator. Mm -hmm. So yes. there's a difference. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't plan what I make. I, I never have a plan. Well, this one I particularly like because this one looks to me like um, she. It, it could be either male or female. It looks to me like a female. Right. But yes. um, the, the lotus, yes. uh, the rebirth. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we reinvent ourselves all the time. Well, we do. Yes. And and I think that we stand on our head much of our lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So I I just love that. And, well, and again, you have these, um, you have art in those leaves. Where, where now? Where is that? What generated that? Or just imagination, or color, or what? Um, well, I, I decided um, to try to take a different um, um, approach. I mean, I've always been interested in, in twisting the figure in a different way. Just. Mm -hmm. For no other reason than the fact that it's a challenge mm -hmm. to not make it necessarily sitting or standing, but doing something um, in an unusual way and, and kind of in an acrobatic sense, just because the enemy of any ceramic sculptor is gravity. Mm -hmm. And um, you say, oh, it doesn't stand up. <laughs> it doesn't stand up. <laughs> and I use a lot of props um, yeah. when I'm working. Um, and But the lotus, I. I um, I just bought about ten skateboard decks and cut them up, and that's what they are. They're skateboard decks. Oh, they're not clay. No, they're wood. <laughs> oh my God! And I know that the Nerman Gallery bought this. Yes, they d they did. And I think kind. that is a great compliment to you because Bruce Hartman uh, is a hard man to please. Yes, <laughs> that's he is. A good, and good thing. he is <laughs> very particular about what he buys for the gallery collection and. I think that is a great compliment to you and to your art. It is. That that, that came to the Nerman. And uh, it must be um, a source of pride to know that it'll be there a long time after you and I are both gone. Yes, it was a big honor for him to um, to buy the piece. Oh, I think it's a real big honor. What, what influences your art? What other than you said we've mm -hmm. talked about Georgia when you went back and mm -hmm. we've talked about uh, going to uh, India. Yes. What? Well, my interest um, actually began even earlier than my trip to India. Um, my interest in, in India and um, actually began in my childhood when my mother um, remarried for <laughs> the fifth time <laughs> uh, to a doctor, a British doctor, um, who was semi and semi. Made your life interesting. Yes, it did. It was it was nothing short of interesting. Um, but uh, in the late seventies, he went to Burma. And, um, oh, I've been to Burma. It's yes. a wonderful country. And he became a B Buddhist, um, mm -hmm. albeit still an Anglican because it's not really a religion, although some people might argue with that. Um, yeah. And he introduced me to, to Buddhism um, really early. And so I, I became really interested in, in Eastern philosophy. And um, it always, I, I never lost my desire to, to go to um, the Far East. And that's one of the things that really strongly influenced. But don't you think that, um, I know that you're interested in history and you're interested in philosophy and you're interested in Japanese culture and yes. all of these things um, are high design things too as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it kind of blends in with your um, with your thinking. But I, I think that history and, and, and culture and everything provide you a perspective. Don't you think so? Absolutely. I, I, I would, I'd be a fool to deny that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm definitely interested in, I mean, I know uh, JCCC is, is in the process of designing a Japanese garden and every year they have the Japanese festival and I, I just find that, I, mean, I, I always go because it, it, it's just fascinating and, and of course Japan has a wonderful uh, long history of ceramics as does China oh, and yes. um, th they're next on my list. Do you carry a sketchbook? Or do you just I remember? Don't. I do, that's one thing I don't, even though I, I, I guess I'm a bit of a hypocrite <laughs> um, in that I tell my students to um, kind of 
s sketch out some of their ideas, but I don't plan. I'm telling. Okay. I'm going to go to class. I'm telling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't plan anything. I guess that's one of my faults and, you know, one of my strengths. Well, you got to plan something when you make these figures because, first of all, they won't stand up, and second of all, you fire them in pieces, don't you? You can't fire, you don't fire that figure as a whole, do you? Um, the last one I, I believe that you're going to show is the, the Durga. Is, that one is... That one was fired in a hole. Oh. That one was fired But, but the in, figures in that sections. we've looked at, you're, you're with the writing on them. You, you didn't fire those as They're well. all whole. Oh, they're all whole? Yes, ma'am. Oh, they you, are. <laughs> did you ever fire when it cracked and you could just oh, yes. shoot yourself? <laughs> I mean, that must be suicide material when one of those well, cracks. not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you've, learned, you've learned I've to handle it. <laughs> as they say, you put your big girl yes, pants on and went right. on. That's right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so interesting. But I do know that you have brought your interest in religion and in history together. Yes. And you had a request that I think was very interesting from very. the uh, Buddhist um, mm -hmm. temple here. Um, the Hindu temple, yes. Oh, the Hindu yes. temple, I'm sorry. To do uh, Saraswati. Mm -hmm. And you said, I would love to do that. And I think that Saraswati is such an interesting goddess. She's the goddess of learning, knowledge, and wisdom. Yes. And so that must have been a, a, um, an effort that was taken on gladly. Yes. It was, it was very interesting. Um, Basfati uh, Ray, who is a member of the Bengali Association of Greater Kansas City, mm -hmm. came to our art um, building and, you know, she explained that a lot of the Indians that come to this country um, are engineers and they're not artisans. They're, the artisans mm -hmm. don't usually come here. And they needed to have a murti or a um, idol made for the mm -hmm. Saraswati Puja. Mm -hmm. And she said something really small. Well, she gave me a month in advance, and so mm -hmm. I had I had to work pretty quickly, even though this this was. You took a, a bottle of Tums and went to work. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> but it was 27 inches. I mean, it was it, it it just barely fit in the in the kiln as far as the height goes, even though it's much smaller than the durga. Um, but I was I was more than happy to do it. it oh, was, I think it was I, right I, down and my I alley. think Saraswati is a very interesting um, deity to do because um, the Sanskrit word Sara means essence, mm -hmm. and Swa is self. So the essence of oneself is really what we all strive for, is it not? Yes, absolutely. In in reaching for wisdom and and learning and knowledge. Yes, that's what we that's where we're going. Yes, and what was even more unusual is that. Um, the fact that, I mean, I had an interest already in, in Indian art, and the fact that an Indian um, community came to a non-Indian, non-Hindu, and trusted me to make it, I was just, I was floored. <laughs> yeah, but you've been to India. The Hindu temples are wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Everything happens but there. But the Vastu um, philosophy that goes behind making these, I mean, you have to be trained to make these sculptures. They're, not, they're very, very specific in the but science. But she trusted you. She trusted me, and I felt really honored by that. I think that's wonderful. And, and I think that we, we need to make the point that Saraswati is the consort of Lord Brahma, yes. the creator of the universe. So she is a very important deity. So yes. the trust that they had in you is even more critical to make this because it's extremely, extremely important. She, um, she has four arms. Yes. And, you know, I think sometimes we, we look at, at Shiva, and Shiva has six or eight, I forgot how many, and, and Saraswati has four, and we think, what? Yeah. <laughs> what, what are all these arms for? And, and, I, and I think it's uh, interesting um, that we talk about her four arms, and they talk about her omnipresence mm -hmm. and her omnipotence. Yes. And one, the two front arms that you see, um, indicate the activity in the physical world, and the two back arms signify her presence in the spiritual world. Yes. And I, I just think that's so interesting because really we are a part of both. Right. Yes. And I, um, and her four hands represent the elements of the inner personality, the mind. Yes. The intellect, conditioned consciousness, and um, um, I forgot the, oh, ego is the fourth one. Right. And so, you know, 
originally all of these things were made for people who might not be able to read right and so the story was That's there and if you knew the the myth or the story that you could listen to somebody tell you and say this is it so it it brought home the lesson to be learned yes yes without language yes without having to read it and mm -hmm. I, and i think that um that's so interesting i think the other interesting thing is that she's often seen with swans and a peacock yes and the swans are uh, guides yes. as such and, and a good. The peacock is known as kind of Vain, vanity. Yes, vanity and kind of not dependable and right. so the balance, always a balance mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Hinduism. Yes. And and I think that um, you know we the Chinese talk about yin and yang. The religions are somewhat you know there are a lot of similarities absolutely in these but but balance I think is is the important thing and uh, t talk about just really briefly when you when you gave the uh, statue to the uh, Hindu um, temple it was a very very moving experience um, it was uh, it took place the ceremony actually took place at the um, the Hindu temple of Greater Kansas City um, up on Lackman uh, Road in Shawnee and um, it was a very small but um, very intimate, um, moving experience. There were children, there were uh, people brought all kinds of symbols and food and um, uh, they had me uh, go up to the statue and they, the, the Brahmin priest actually blessed the statue and blessed me. And, it was and just, then it became a deity. And then it became a deity and it was so moving. It was really a, a powerful experience. Oh, I'm certain. I know that she's supposed to be made out of terracotta clay. I, is she? Is she? Uh, no, she is not. She, she's, not. Uh, she's actually made out of stoneware um, because uh, they wanted to have uh, a light they didn't want her to be dark. She's supposed to be light, actually. So they usually ah. paint her a whiter color, a yeah. lighter color, uh, for the purpose of the puja. Um, so that's why I made you her. You talk about puja. What is a puja? Um, it's like a prayer. It's mm -hmm. like a prayer cer a ceremony. Uh -huh. That happens when she becomes a deity, then she is worthy of a puja right. ceremony. Yes. Yeah. See, I just, I just think that's wonderful. Um, Hinduism seems to predominate your work. Maybe it's only because I'm seeing uh, Saraswati and, and uh, Durga. Well, actually, you're right. Because um, when I went to India, I spent a couple of months there back in 98. It's a wonderful, I've been to India too, it's a wonderful country. It is, and it's, it's sensory overload all the way. I mean, yeah. the smells, the sights, and yeah. you just, it, you take it all in. And um, I went temple hopping for two months there and um, backpacking and it was hot. It was in the middle of the summer and the, the days were about 130 degrees. I mean, it was just It is hot. I was there in what they call the winter time and the sweat was pouring off of everybody and they were walking around with a sweater on. Yes. It, it was ungodly hot. It yes. was. It was. But it's uh, so rich. The images are just so rich. Um, and Oh, oh, <laughs> and they're everywhere. You're just yes. kind of on overload. Yes. And it's just, and the, the interesting thing is the symbolism. Everything mm -hmm. is a symbol. Again, yes. for people who were not readers in the early uh, years of, of the Hindu religion. And I, I want to talk about Durga a little bit, too, because Durga is important, and you made one of those as well. I did. And I know that there is a festival um, de devoted to Durga, or the mother goddess. Yes. And um, um, there... Why, why do you know, uh, can you talk about that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Okay. Um, every state, or, or I should say, um, culture within India, because India really isn't just one culture. I mean, there's different languages, there's different oh, um, yeah. ethnicities. Um, and so um, every, whether you're in the Dravidian South or the Punjab North or what have you, um, they, they all have different, uh, whether it's a different religion, but it, even within Hinduism, they have different deities that they specialize in. And Durga is um, one of the, the most, she's the foremost goddess in Bengal, which is the most eastern, well not the east, most eastern, but the, the eastern state of, uh, of India that we're more familiar with. And, um, well, and she's the personification of the active side of Lord Shiva. Yes. So yes. The, she's important too. Yes, very important. Um, and um, 
generally, um, as you pointed out earlier, um, generally these deities are made out of uh, terracotta um, because it's um, a secondary riverbed clay that's found, you know, in the in the Ganges um, mm -hmm, Delta mm -hmm, riverbed. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I just think that's, and she's usually seen riding a lion. Yes, in in uh, Bengal, she's riding a lion. We think of Bengal tigers, but mm -hmm. they say the proper um, vehicle for her is a lion. Um, other parts of India, she might be riding a tiger. So the, what she's riding is not as important as her who she is. Right, and the fact yeah. that she, um, for the the ceremony that they actually have and the festival they have in October. And forgive me if I mispronounce this, uh, Durga Nav Navatri, uh -huh. um, is uh, the celebration of good over evil, uh -huh. uh, whereby she is... Well, um, that's what she does. Yes. She is the protector, and uh, she has ten arms. She's and the protector of the righteous and the destroyer of evil. Yes, and she's <laughs> destroying the devil yes. Mahisha, and um, that's, what, that's why she has ten arms. Yeah. And in those arms she carries... Uh, weapons. Weapons. Weapons and symbols of who she is. Yeah. So she's she's right there. Yes, <laughs> I think. Um, uh, well, I think the point that you just made is important. That Hindus all celebrate this festival, but in a little different way in the different parts of India. Yes, it is very interesting. I mean, when I went there, um, you know, the interpretations of uh, you know, if you took Shiva for example, one of the foremost gods in Hinduism, he's interpreted in so many different ways. Like if you go to the southern part of India, uh, Shiva is really, really, it's, it's very, um, his presence is very strong in the south, whereas in the north, uh, it may be, um, you know, uh, Vishnu. Or well, and, well, and that's right. Well, you know, it's no different than, than in Catholic churches. They'll have a patron saint. Exactly. And, and often that patron saint is a, uh, from that part of the, the world or from that country or even from that city sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. again, you know, but but I I find this so interesting because Durga is a balance for mm. the Lord Shiva and yes. Saraswati as a balance again. So you see, we always have a balance. Yes. Which um, and in in ancient Egypt, remember when one crossed the crossed the the river into the next world their heart was weighed on a scale of, yes. as opposed to a feather, again, a balance. Mm -hmm. So religion um, tends to put that forward, I think, don't I, you? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I do. I, we just go about it different ways. We go about it different ways. That's right. exactly right. But yeah. in the essence of it is very much the same. So, mm -hmm. But there is a, a Durga Puja, too. Did, has, where did this Durga go? Um, actually, it's still in my office. Oh, well. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, uh, it's uh, October is when the uh, the Durga Puja takes place, and I believe it's going to take place at the Lenexa Community Center in October. Well, and it, it is Durga <clears throat> accompanied often by Lakshmi and by Saraswati and by the Lord Ganesh. I think the focus for the for the puja, I believe, is just on Durga. It is, but often when you see uh, her, yes. she's accompanied by some of these others um, um, because they they do different things. They have different yes. cultural functions. Absolutely. And um, the Lord Ganesh is the one with the elephant. Yes, yeah. he's the he's the uh, the god of domesticity. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And I see. I just I find it so interesting. And the Hindu temples are wonderful. Everything goes on in there. Oh yes. Uh, and it's it's a a, 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 a microcosm mm. of of uh, Hindu society. Yes, it is. It, it is. is. It's just it's wonderful. Well, I do know that any good teacher has very good students. <laughs> Absolutely. And you have brought some of the things that your students have done. And I want you to see those things because they're beautiful. They are. And uh, <laughs> is this a teapot that works, or is it just a teapot? Um, you know, I, I I think it has the potential to work, but um, and the I slides never really do these justice. But, I just think I it's mean, beautiful. And, and Brett does a beautiful job uh, taking images of these. But they, this teapot's pretty big. Oh, it's and, big. And uh -huh. so um, it's probably about 12 inches high. Well, the glaze is interesting. Yes, it is. It's a it's a um, it's a copper red over a chino um, glaze, and um, it's uh, 
you can see how it runs a lot. Um, yeah, and, and it's supposed to, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but a lot of the wonderful things about the glazes is, is that you don't always know exactly how they're going to behave. And Life is a surprise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is my favorite. I love that. Yeah, this was made um, many years ago by a student who actually um, has had me um, several times over the years, uh, Sarah Herman. Um, and she made, we, I, I had the students do two teapots for this uh, mm -hmm. assignment. Mm -hmm. One had to be functional and the other one had to be totally unconventional and non-functional. Mm -hmm. And this is her non-functioning teapot. No, no part of it, there's no opening except for the air. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. um, so but she, it is hollow yes it mm -hmm. is it is hollow mm -hmm. um, and um, is she a ceramicist now I would say so yes <laughs> so she she does it still um, I don't know if she does it full-time but mm -hmm. um, I, but I know it's, it's something that she's really developed mm -hmm. really well I like this too and they they took a, a note from you and made some um, uh, sketches in their ceramics? Yes, uh, I believe the assignment in this one was for a um, metaphorical um, metaphorical vessels and so they had to kind of tell a story um, mm -hmm. on a, using a vessel. Mm -hmm. And um, you brought some others too? Yes. I like this too. Yes, um, again this is a this is a metaphorical portrait um, of the artist. Uh -huh. um, so in this case she uh, made a chair, chair and, and, and the heart. Uh -huh. uh, so she had they had to use symbols in lieu of a literal interpretation. Mm -hmm. But isn't it wonderful? Uh, and, and here's another. I love the colors in this one. Again, a, an interesting glaze. Yes. Many um, of them do take a note from you in their sketches when they, in the, yes. you, know, you know, they do. I'm, I'm very hesitant to, to share a lot of my work. Um, well, that's students. right, because a good teacher does not want the students to emulate the teacher. But I don't want to be produce a bunch of that's me. Right, that's right, that's <laughs> right. I want them to be their well, own You know, person. I have to say that uh, what your students have produced truly is an extension of your ability as a ceramicist and as a teacher. And I want to say thank you, Laura Harris oh, Gascoigne. Oh, Gascoigne. And I, um, I just, um, you know, all the Gascones can be very proud of Laura Harris. Let's just <laughs> put you. it that way. And I think that art is always food for the soul and an enjoyment for all. So thank you for being with us. Thank Thanks, you. Laura. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's our community, you know. <laughs>